buttons need to be the bounced. Can we use capacitors for this job? If you are just interested in the answer, the answer is no, you shouldn't use capacitors. So um, you're welcome. If you're interested in why, then stick around. One side to five volts, the other side to ground and the button signal, of course, pin three. There's a pull up resistor to five volts. This is our button and ground. Every time someone pushes this button, I would like to get a serial message to my computer. Serial begin 9600 Boolean state. If digital read pin free is low, then the button is pressed and state is not low. Yeah, it's called previous state previous state is not low, then we pushed it, right? Yeah, that's, this is the moment where we push it and then we serial.print button pushed and we will serial print ln for new line. We also need to set previous state to low and if digital read free is high, then we set it back to high. Hello Arduino, are you connected? Great. Button pushed. Oh. You see that? Sometimes I get more messages. Bunch of messages. Why is that happening? It sometimes bounces and closes twice. When it opens, then it doesn't really open. It bounces. Let's take a look at the bouncing. I will measure the voltage across the button. If I push the button, then the voltage is zero. If I release the button, the voltage is high. So far so good. Let's do normal mode. I would like to trigger in both ways actually. Okay. If I push the button, it goes down. And if I release the button, it goes up. But if we zoom in, Sometimes we push the button and it jumps back. Sometimes we release the button and it jumps back. Could we prevent this by adding a capacitor in parallel to the button? Now, if I release the button and the voltage goes up, I could add a capacitor here that prevents the spikes, right? <sighs> well, let's have a look. I add a capacitor here. I push the button. It looks the same. I release the button. Oh. <laughs> when the button is released and the capacitor is charged by 10k. And I now pick the 100 nanofarad capacitor. So this results in this charging curve here. But if I play around with it, then sometimes we see something like this. The button is pushed then the capacitor is charged again and the button is pushed again. So the problem isn't really fixed. As soon as this connection here is closed, the capacitor is discharged as fast as possible. There is really almost no resistance limiting the current. That is very bad for the button. Suddenly there is a huge current flow. The limiting factor in this case here really is the resistance of the button and the resistance of the button is maybe 50 milliohms. The initial current, if we push the button down and the capacity is fully charged and we have five volts divided by 0 0.05 ohms and it's 100 amps. So 100 amps are flowing through this poor button here. I'm sorry button, I won't do this again. <laughs> the best solution to debounce is just adding a delay. Let's add a delay. If the signal goes low, then we add a delay of 20 milliseconds. And I also add a delay into this here. So if I push the button, I get the message. If I release the button, I get no message. If I push the button, message, no message, message, no message. 
Now it works pretty reliable. You can play around with this timing. Of course, you can make it longer if you don't expect the user to push like crazy. Please don't use capacitors. It's a very bad idea. You will have very high current flow through the button and the button will very quickly die. If this video was helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hype. How are you the bouncing buttons? Are you using capacitors? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.